Hey coders and welcome to episode 4 of our pandas playlist. Today's episode is going to be somewhat more analytical in that we're going to be learning how to quickly calculate basic summary statistics for our pandas data frames and pandas series. So there are a lot of different methods that you can use in order to calculate certain statistics. However, in this video, we're going to look at a good strong subset of those. Um, these are very frequently used uh, in basically every single uh, Python pandas project. So we're going to be taking a look at these, which are count, value counts, min, and smallest, max, and largest, mean, median, mode, uh, standard deviation, AGG, and describe. So without any further ado, let's jump on in over to the code and learn these methods. We're back in our Jupyter lab, and the first thing that we're going to do, as always, is import pandas as PD. After that, we're going to read in our CSV data that is hosted at this web address right here. And then we're just going to display that data frame. So again, this is the data frame that we've been using throughout the course of this playlist thus far. So all of this should look familiar to us. So let's just move on to the first method for this video, and that is count. So count counts the number of non-NAN slash null values, so non-null values in the certain columns of the data frame or the rows of the data frame. Uh, and you can specify whether you want to look at columns or rows using this optional argument uh, axis right here. So let's just run this cell and see what we get. So it looks like we're going to be running the count method on our data frame. And if we do that, then we're going to get a series in response and every single one of these data points in the series is a column um, that specifies how many uh, values in that column are non-null. So if you look back up here in our data frame, it looks like our data frame is only 1,000 rows. So it looks like for the column student ID, every single one of those values in that column at least has a value, or every single one of those rows has a value in it. Uh, same with the column gender. It looks like all 1,000 rows in the gender column have a non-null value. However, when it comes to race slash ethnicity, only 993 of those rows in this column have data in them, right? Have a non-null value, which means that seven of those values in this column are null, right? They are just missing. Uh, so uh, you can actually also run this method on a specific column. Uh, so let's say that we want to run dot count on a column or on a series just like this. Um, then it looks like that would give us 993, exactly what we saw right there. Um, cool, so one of the other things that we can do is specify an optional argument with this method, right? So if we're, if we're counting, um, if, we're, if we're calling dot count on the data frame itself, instead of counting up uh, the number of non-null values in certain columns, right, um, across all of the rows, then we can say axis equals one. And what that's gonna do is it's going to count up for each row um, how many non-null values are in uh, all of the columns. So if I run this, we can see that for row zero, we have 11 values that are not uh, null. And if we come up here, we can see, okay, yep, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And I know this says none right here, but this is actually the word none. Uh, this is not a missing value. This is just the word none. So it looks like that is correct right there. All right. So uh, before we move on to the next method, I just want to do one more thing. And that is say head 50, just to analyze um, those rows that are indeed NAN. And if we do that, then we can see down here on row 35, Indeed, this row is missing because it is an NAN value. This is a NumPy special value uh, for not a number, but basically what that means is that it is missing. Uh, looks like we also have that for row uh, 46. Cool, so that is what count does. Again, it counts up the number of non-null values. However, 
let's move on to our next method, which is value counts. So value counts is very similar to counts. However, instead of just counting up the number of non-null values, what it's going to do is it's going to first look at all of the unique values, um, and then it's going to count up all the non-null values uh, based on those unique values. So if I were to run this cell right here, then it looks like uh, in this column, we have the unique values of Asian American, multiracial, African American, Native American, and white American. And then we also get the frequency or the count of every of these unique values. So it looks like there are 317 rows that are Asian American in the race ethnicity column. Uh, 260 rows that are multiracial, and all the way down, um, it's going to list every single unique value. Um, however, it's not going to it's not going to list the number of NAN values, the number of null values, right? Um, as we already know, there are indeed null values in this column. However, we don't see it listed right here. Well, if we did want to list it then what we could do is specify an optional argument, drop NA, and set that equal to false. By default, it is true, but if we now set it to false, then there we go, now we get the value counts or the number of uh, NANs in this column right here, and that is indeed seven, like we saw above. All right, there's one more optional argument that I want to showcase, and that is normalize. So right now, we're just getting the raw frequencies Right, there are 317 um, counts of Asian American in our data frame. But let's say that I instead wanted, instead wanted to get the percentage, right, the, the relative uh, percentage of Asian Americans, uh, the frequency of Asian Americans within this column. So if I were to say normalize equals true, then here we go. It looks like Asian American comes up 31.7% of the time. Um, multiracial comes up 26% of the time, uh, and then we have 0.7% uh, of our data in this column is missing. That's what it says right here. So that's just the difference between normalized false and normalized true. All right, let's keep moving on. The next a couple of these methods are going to be extremely easy to understand, I think, um, because like this one is min. So min returns the minimum value of a series. Right, so let's say that we wanted to get the uh, reading score, the minimum reading score in our data frame. All that we would do is just at the end of the series, type dot min. All right, and it looks like the minimum reading score is 17. So uh, some student got 17 on their reading score, and that was the lowest score out of the entire data frame for reading score. Cool, so min is awesome for just getting the minimum score, but let's say that you wanted like the, the three smallest um, scores in your data frame. Well, that's when you would use n smallest. So n smallest returns the smallest n elements in a series. Um, cool, so uh, for this, this method, or this cell, what this is doing is it's going to get the reading score column, and then it's going to get the three Right here, we're specifying three smallest values in this column. So if I run this cell, then there we go. It looks like um, the first smallest is 17, which is confirmed up here with the min function. Uh, however, the second smallest is 23, and then the third smallest is 24. Now, I really like using n smallest even more than min um, because it also tells you the index, right? It returns a series for you. So we know that student 59 got a 17, student 327 got a 23, and you don't get that information with the min function alone. Even if you just wanted to say n smallest equals one, uh, you're still going to be able to get that index, which you don't get up here in the min function. Cool, so let's go back to three. So there's one optional argument that's actually pretty important to know, and that is keep. So if I were to say keep equals all, what this does is it's used to determine whether duplicate values of the nth smallest value are included in the series, right? So if let me just run this just to show you what I mean. So if I run keep that all, even though I said get me the three smallest values and it returned four, the reason why it, it returned four is because I'm saying get me all of the values that tie for like the nth smallest 
um, value. So, uh, for instance, student 980 also got a or, or also got a score of 24. So they are kind of like tied for third smallest. And I told um, pandas to get the three smallest. So it's going to be including that student as well. All right, so uh, let's move on. So the next one is max, very similar to min. In fact, I didn't even change the documentation there. There we go. Um, cool, so um, maximum or max returns the maximum value in a series. So this is again, very self-explanatory. Uh, looks like the max score, uh, a student got a 100 on their reading score. That is the max score in this data frame. Cool, let's keep moving on. So n largest, again, very similar to n smallest, uh, but now we're going to be returning the largest n elements in a series. So if I were to run this, it looks like three students, or the top three students, all got 100s on their score, um, on their reading score, and those were students 106, 114, and 149. However, with um, n largest, we can also specify that keep argument so if we say keep equals all, then now we're, we're going to say, all right, give me the three largest. However, all of these students are basically tied for the three largest scores, right? So all of these students got a 100. So they're all technically within the uh, three largest scores, right? Because they're all tied. So that's what this uh, keep argument does. All right, cool. Let's keep moving on. So uh, the next one's mean, again, very self-explanatory. Uh, it returns the average value of a series. So if we wanted to get the average writing score in our data frame, all that we would need to do is just, again, uh, specify that column right here, writing score, and then say dot mean. So if I run that, it looks like the mean writing score or the average writing score is a 68. Uh, cool, so we can specify it, again, we, we have this optional argument of axis, which means we don't have to actually get the mean of all of the rows in a specific column. We can get a mean of all of the columns in a specific row. So if I were to comment that out, comment this in, um, if I wanted to just get the data frame with these columns, math score, reading score, and writing score, and then calculate the mean, per student or per row across all of the columns, I would say access equals one. And if I were to run this, then there we go. Now I have all of the rows, right? And we're getting now the mean of the columns. So we can see that for student zero, their mean score, if you were to average math, reading, and writing together would be a 72. And for student one, it'd be 82. Student two would be 92. So that is uh, a cool little trick if you wanted to uh, calculate the average across um, columns in a given row. All right, let's keep moving on. So the next one is median, the exact same uh, functionality as mean. But now uh, we're just going to be returning the median value of this series. Um, if you recall, median is the number basically in the middle, right? So it's not really biased for um, large outliers. Um, cool. So now if we were to see the median writing score, it looks like the median uh, writing score is a 69. Uh, and of course, you can do the same trick that I just did with mean on this as well by specifying access equals to one. And there we go. Now we have the median scores of of the math, reading, and writing um, of all of the students, right? Cool. Um, so let's keep moving on now. So mode is the most frequent number, right? So if you want to uh, run this method mode, it's going to return the mode of a series. So let's see what is the mode of the race slash ethnicity uh, column. So it looks like the most frequent value is Asian American, which we kind of knew that already, right? Uh, if we come up here again, we can see that Asian American is definitely the most frequent um, uh, value in this column right here. So that dot mode is basically just confirming that what we already knew. Cool, so now STD is standard deviation. That's going to return the sample standard deviation in a series. 
So if we were to run this cell, it looks like the standard deviation of our writing score, uh, of all the writing scores in our data frame is 15, right? Um, cool, so uh, that's just some statistics that if you don't really understand standard deviation, that's just again another metric, another statistic that you can report on. Um, cool, so you can do the same trick with axes equal one with standard deviation, so let's just run that. Uh, it looks like the standard deviation between math, reading, and writing scores uh, per student are listed all, um, all right here. So it looks like you know student one has a lot of variance, um, student two or student zero uh, has a lower variance in between their scores, but again, that's just uh, another cool method that you can run. All right, let's move on now to ag. So ag, actually returns an aggregate of summary stats. So uh, with all of these stats right here, like say standard deviation, mode, uh, median, um, mean, you're basically just running them one at a time, right? Uh, so if you want to get all the means or the, the mean of all of the you know rows or maybe the mean of this column right here, then you would just say dot mean. But let's say that you want to see the mean and the median at the same time, or you want to see the mean, median, and standard deviation all at the same time. Well, you would pass in all of those function names, all those method names in a list to the ag or the aggregate function right here. And if I run this, then, there, then here we go. Now, um, in the data frame, we get the mean, median, and standard deviation of uh, all of these uh, numerical columns, right? So it's going to go through the data frame. It's going to see, all right, what are the numerical columns? And now let me get the mean, median, and standard deviation of all of that. Of course, you could always just specify um, if you just want to see like math score or something like that. Totally, totally cool. Um, and that will just get you the mean, median, and standard deviation of math score. But again, I think it is pretty cool to see it across the entire data frame as well. All right, so the last method that we have for this video is describe. So describe, um, let's say that you want to see just a good sample um, of uh, summary statistics or a good uh, data frame of summary statistics without like writing in all of the function names or all the method names in this ag method right here. Well, you could just use the describe method and that's going to return um, stats on central tendency, dispersion, and shape of your um, of your columns. So let me run this just to show you what I mean. Cool, so this describe is always going to return uh, this right off the bat. Uh, this right off the bat. It's going to return the count, uh, which is what we saw in a previous uh, method up there. Um, it's going to return the mean, the standard deviation, min, uh, and then these uh, quantiles right here, 25%, uh, 50, and 75%. Uh, and it's also going to show you the max. Cool, so that is what, that's just a quick and easy way of basically writing this ag function. But uh, for these summary stats right here, these are some of the most popular ones, at least, or that's what uh, pandas thinks. Um, there's one optional argument that's worth going over, and that is percentile. So as you can see right here, right now it's giving us the 25th percentile, the 50th percentile, which is also known as the median, and then the 75th percentile. But let's say instead of getting just quartiles, you wanted to get quintiles, right? So you could actually specify your own quantiles um, in a list object right here. So let's say we wanted the 20th percentile, uh, the 40th, the 60th, and the 80th. Again, you can specify whatever ones you want, but let's just go with quintiles right now. And if I run that, then now we can see that we get the 20th, the 40th, the 60th, and the 80th um, uh, quintiles right there. We also get the 50th, but again, that's just known as the median, uh, and that's basically always going to be there, uh, which is, I think, um, a good call that we all always know what the median is. Cool, so that is just displaying some basic summary statistics on your data frame and data series. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the very next episode.